Again, thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Toba Kasdan, and following her will be Ann Milling and Nancy Marcelia. Madam Chair, Mr. Yaki, and distinguished members of the National Platform Committee, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today on the very important topic of domestic violence. My name is Tova Kazdin, and I am the Program Manager of Jewish Women International, where I lead our advocacy initiatives, including our Interfaith Domestic Violence Coalition. I am also a former prosecutor from Montgomery County, Maryland, specializing in domestic violence. By way of background, Jewish Women International, formerly B'nai B'rith Women, is a century-old organization of 75,000 members and supporters dedicated to the well-being of women and girls nationwide. A key focus of our work is domestic violence. Recognizing that domestic violence victims often turn to their religious leaders in houses of worship for guidance and refuge during times of abuse, JWI convened the Interfaith Domestic Violence Coalition to unite the collective energies and visions of the faith communities to work together on promoting national legislation that protects our women and children. This is a first of its kind interfaith coalition and we represent millions of Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, Presbyterian, United Methodist, United Church of Christ, Seventh-day Adventist, and Unitarian Universalist congregants. We all come together in our shared coalition mission to eradicate domestic violence. As outlined on page two of our written testimony, you'll see that our coalition respectfully urges expanded language and different placement of the domestic violence plank in this 2008 platform. In the 2004 DNC platform, it, domestic violence was given insufficient attention and it was not placed in the proper plank. The DNC platform included just one sentence on domestic violence, and I quote, we will help break the cycle of domestic violence by punishing offenders and standing with victims. And it was placed under the crime and violence plank under the larger category of strengthening homeland security. As a former domestic violence prosecutor, I would respectfully suggest that the language and placement was improper for two reasons. It focused more attention on punishing the batterers than helping the victims and their children with the life-saving resources they need to stay safe from further abuse. Most surprisingly, the domestic violence language immediately preceded language endorsing American Second, excuse me, Second Amendment right to own firearms. Firearms are often used to threaten, injure, or kill victims and children. The placement was inherently at odds with one of the leading tenets of the domestic violence movement, which is to keep firearms out of the hands of batterers. Our coalition respectfully asks you to place this recommended expanded language under a new plank, one that in the past the DNC has adopted, which is either ending or eradicating domestic violence, and it would be very helpful to put it under a strong, healthy relationship category versus crime and violence. I say that not that domestic violence should not be considered a crime, but that we really need to focus on the victims and the resources and keeping them safe and not just on the outcome of punishing the batterers. Voters, especially women voters, are keenly and deeply aware that domestic violence is an important issue in their life. Only two years ago, Lifetime took a Pulse poll right before the 2006 midterms elections. And this is very interesting. Nearly all women, 97%, felt that the issue of domestic violence and sexual assault against women and girls was important and would impact who they would vote for. 61% also personally knew a woman who has been the victim of domestic violence. That's not surprising. As we know from the research studies, where one in four women will experience domestic violence during her lifetime, and one in five high school girls will be the victim of domestic or sexual assault from a dating partner, domestic violence is a crisis of epidemic proportion. It affects every demographic, every culture, married, dating, gay, lesbian, bisexual, all of our 
cultural, religious, and secular communities. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimated that the health-related costs of intimate partner violence exceeds $5.8 billion nearly 4.1 billion of which is for direct medical and mental health care services. Yet, domestic violence has received little attention in the national dialogue and discourse of national campaigns. There is some to celebrate, and that is there are core federal programs, such as the Violence Against Women Act, which was authorized in 1994, which has administered many life-saving and vital programs to our communities and our women and children. We need to fully fund programs such as the Violence Against Women Act, the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act, and of course, the Victims of Crime Act, which the Victims of Crime Act only uses non-taxpayer money. So that is very, that is something very easy to get behind. Even though VAWA supports domestic violence victims, there are still several critical unmet needs in our community, and I would like to highlight those in the last few minutes. The first is the housing needs of domestic violence victims. If they need to escape an abusive situation, often there's nowhere to go after their shelter time has expired. There is little transitional and permanent housing options for these women, causing them to make a very scary decision as to whether they should stay in an abusive relationship or risk being homeless. And we outline that in our testimony as well. I'd also like to highlight the extreme legal needs of battered women. There is a crisis in our court system where battered women are losing custody of their children at alarming rates. This is due in large part to the fact that attorneys and judges are not trained in domestic violence. Their training is certainly not sufficient because battered women, even upon demonstrating with a lot of evidence that either they or their children were abused by their batter, are still losing custody. We also need to encourage national legislation such as the ones that Senator Biden and Senator Specter offered up this year the National Domestic Violence Volunteer Attorney Network Act, which would place 100,000 trained pro bono attorneys into um, a pool of, of needs so battered women could be represented. I thank you very much for listening to this very important issue, and I urge you to adopt our expanded language and recommendations in your platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tova. Questions? All right. Thank you so thank much. You. We'll now hear from Ann Milling and Nancy Marsilia. Did I say that right? You did. <laughs> and after them will be David Steingarber. <laughs> 